Uh, and uh, the floor is now handed over to Vincent Liu. Vincent, all yours. Sure. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Great. Uh, I just want to say I'm feel pr uh, privileged to talk after two exciting experimental talks. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, advancement in techniques. I also want to um, uh, show publicly how, I, how much I appreciate what Dave Snow, my colleague, uh, ha has done in the last uh, year, uh, trying to organize this uh, workshop long before the pandemic. And hopefully I can join him and also Andrew Daly, who was here, and uh, we still think he's here <laughs> with us. In, I, I hope I can join uh, Dave Snook and uh, da Andrew Daney na next year to host everybody in Pittsburgh in real person conference. Uh, that would be our goal. All right, today uh, I'm gonna talk about something um, uh, really on the theory side. Uh, it's a little bit on the future theory, not directly on the current theory. Uh, namely, I'll talk about the real and the imaginary time crystal in the both Hubble model systems. <clears throat> um, these phases would emerge uh, in a many body system in a special regime. That is the interaction, uh, which I will show you is uh, of a special form. So I hope uh, artificial quantum systems such as cold atoms, perhaps even polarities, can simulate uh, those uh, special regimes, um, uh, especially regime with a particular form of the interaction uh, for the best solution. Uh, so today I'm gonna, uh, this is the outline. I will give a quick introduction, actually a motivation to talk about the time crystal. Uh, then I will actually talk about the two uh, themes of the time crystal. The first is a, I will call the clean flow quake time crystal. Uh, that's actually the real time uh, time crystal. The second part will be the imaginary time crystal uh, that is related to I would call a temperature crystal. If I have time, I will talk about a some I'll give a brief report on some uh, recent results uh, on the Harvard model uh, for something we call the anomalous floquet high order topological cornex, I mean, uh, uh, topologic places. Uh, in case I will forget, I want to thank my collaborators to begin with, uh, especially my postdocs, um, Biao Huan and Hai Ping Hu, and my collaborators in Shanghai and uh, George Mason, and also the funding agency, Army Research Office in the Air Force in Murray. I think many of us in the audience uh, have heard about the time crystal uh, in some way uh, for the benefits of the student postdocs and also non expert. I may give a kind of like a quick review uh, on the background. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, this idea uh, proposed by uh, Frank Wojcik. And this topic actually has attracted a good number of great minds in the physics, uh, which I will show you in the next few slides. Uh, let me summarize what I think I understand what the Frank mean uh, when he pu uh, put forward uh, this uh, idea in a series of papers. So that uh, if you think about the Hamiltonian problem, that's what we are used to. Um, uh, he would consider a, a equilibrium problem uh, with certain ground state. So the Hamiltonian is time independent and certainly a time independent Hamiltonian is translation invariant in time. Uh, it's actually uh, mathematically, you can say it's actually a Hamiltonian is invariant and the infinitesimal uh, shift in time. And what's remarkable is that it is a, uh, a analog of the ground state, uh, which actually has a time dependence, such that the uh, there's a physical observable that uh, O that will acquire some finite expectation value. And this f of t, however, does not have the same symmetry as the Hamiltonian. Instead, it is going to have a, a district symmetry. That is actually the f is only invariant when you shift uh, in the time axis by a, a, a certain uh, finite amount of time, that's the t. And this emergent periodicity indicates the time crystal. So that was the early idea. Uh, this actually generated a lot of debates with the local theory uh, by Oshikawa et al. And uh, basically, they proved that the time crystal is not possible for a equilibrium ground state uh, for a problem that has a short range interaction. So the theory, if you're looking at the paper, has a lot of assumptions uh, uh, in the proof. So uh, here, I just want to indicate two. So because this, this topic is actually uh, has a lot of people uh, uh, in the uh, community, 
So there are many more than just two ways. Here, I'm going to summarize two ways out of this uh, assumption. So basically, if you want to get around the local theorem, people think about the, um, uh, the violation of the assumptions through the local theorem. And one of the uh, possible uh, condition is that you go to a non-equilibrium uh, problem, especially you still want to keep some residual uh, translation asymmetry. That is the domain we call the uh, 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 time crystal. <clears throat> the second way out, uh, it will be use a long range interaction. So I will not talk about that today. There's a lot of talks, I mean, I saw studies uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the community. The flow query time crystal is actually based on the periodic driving system, right? Uh, uh, that was pioneered by Shivaj Sondi, Chatan Nayak, Norma Yao, and their company. And there are many other follow-up work. Uh, then let me just uh, set up the stage uh, to uh, introduce the model I will talk about today. Uh, so, because many people would have a different definition of time crystal, especially when you're talking about the periodic driving system. Uh, so, I just want to set the criterion. Uh, if uh, anyone has questions regarding what do you mean by time crystal, so I'm going to borrow what uh, Chetan Nayak and others in that uh, uh, group uh, have actually introduced. Uh, so, you can think about uh, a modification with the uh, Frank Wilczek had in mind, and you start with a translationary, uh, you, you start with a, a kind of like a time lattice system. So that means your Hamiltonian does not have a continuous translation asymmetry, but it does have a district translation asymmetry in time. Okay, that is actually the, uh, a driving period T that's given by you. And you have this observable in a class of states. Um, and uh, you can start as the initial state you evolve to say whether the system is stable on that. Uh, so this observable does not have the same symmetry as the Hamiltonian. And uh, however, this would have a, a higher period, for example, 2t or any number of integers. So typically people study like 2t. So that means f is not invariant under a single t translation, single period translation, but instead a double period translation. So this is the, uh, a, a lower symmetry than the original Hamiltonian. The other condition like rigidity, persistence, et cetera. So that means, for example, persistence means this has to grow in time, has to be stable in lifetime as long as the system time. So this is the analog of the charge density wave on the lattice in the space part. Um, such a proposal of FTC, the flow time crystal was observed, observed uh, in the experiments by Merlin and Harvard and Yale. So I think people already heard about that. I just want to point out uh, those experiments are based on theory of localized spins. And obviously probably even the, like the polarity and other systems, you know, can also study, uh, can map to the spin problems. You may be able to check this. And cold atoms in principle can also do this problem. And uh, those results actually um, based on a really fundamental assumption. That is actually you need a disorder as a key ingredient to stabilize this time crystal phase. Because otherwise, this time crystal is not going to be localized in the many body sense uh, or thermalized. So it's not going to be a, a phase, right? So that's actually the key. So disorder had, has been sought as a key ingredient. So then we try to ask a question whether this is really, um, really fundamentally um, important to have such an uh, ingredient. Uh, so, uh, so the open question is, is the concept of disorder, namely the many body localization uh, necessary for the flow quick time crystal? So that's a, actually a, a basic question, right? Um, so we really want to understand. So we actually uh, uh, found, have found an example uh, that actually shows the answer is no. So that's actually uh, in the next couple minutes then in this part two, I'm gonna show you this model, all right? <clears throat> So our model is actually pretty uh, similar to the model produced uh, by um, Chetan Naik and Norman Yao and others in that category, uh, except that uh, we're gonna remove the condition disorder. And uh, also we're gonna change it to from spin problem to a, um, a boson or Fermat problem. In particular, we're gonna talk about the hardcore core bosons, uh, which is actually, the system is equivalent to the Fermat problem in the 1D. Uh, that's well known. 
Uh, so our model um, instead of consists of three steps, like in the Lyric and others model, and, and the Ashwin uh, and the Lomayar model. And here, our Hamiltonian sucks over two components, H1 and H2, uh, in two time intervals, T1 T2, respectively. So it's dynamical. So dynamical is key, actually, in the sense you have to be tunable. We're assuming there's a hybrid local contact uh, infinity interaction, actually. That's the hardcore condition. So it's not showing in the Hamiltonian here. So otherwise, you have this kind of tunneling. So this is a, is a ladder model. So it's a two chain, it's a one dimensional uh, ladder with two chains, or you can call it legs. Um, so you have A chain, a B chain, and there's a tunneling between the A and the B chain, and there's actually a tunneling along the chain. There's a nearest labor interaction. And actually nearest labor and the longer interaction is gonna be useful for the time crystal uh, order. That's very important. We have this Zeeman term, but the delta here is actually a constant, not a disorder. Uh, we define the kind of the so-called uh, uh, order permit for the time crystal. That's the polarization, okay? Polarization, uh, POT. Uh, that's actually, it's nothing but the number, particle number difference between A chain and B chain. And so it's like the oscillation between A chain and B chain. That's actually the uh, order parameter. And then if you go ahead and do some numerical calculation, um, um, <clears throat> you actually really find Depending on the interaction strengths, there's two categories. If you look at the black dots, so the oscillation is gonna die out and revival. Revival is because of finding the size uh, effect, et cetera. For the stronger interaction and finding the tunneling, actually you find out like the blue dots. So this system actually will remain to have a oscillation period like a 2T, double period. This is very similar to what the, uh, the early study of the flow time crystal problem. Um, then, so basically for the strong interaction case, you have uh, strong interaction finding the tunneling. It's very important, both. Um, so the system can really talk to each other. They're not localized, but in the same time, it's like a nearest labor uh, interaction. The U here is the, not the hybrid local on, on, on-site interaction, it's the nearest labor interaction. So you have the time crystal phase. And then we also did the spec, we also tackled the spectral uh, function of the time correlation. Um, I mean, temporal correlation function of the polarization. And as you can see that, again, there are two phases. In a strong, uh, strong interacting regime, uh, you actually can see that the, um, let me just move this one away. <clears throat> so you can have the so-called time crystal phase where the, uh, this peak in A over omega is actually uh, stay, will stay at this pi over t. That's like a 2T period where the unit is T in the, for the, uh, the pi over T. I mean, the one over T for the uh, frequency of uh, access. So this, the peak here is actually correspond to 2T period. And when you change other parameters, tune in other parameters, uh, this, this period doesn't change. That's the rigidity, all right? And if you go to the weak interaction regime, actually, this is different. And what happens actually, you find out this uh, peak will shift. So that's what we call the chaotic uh, phase. And uh, we actually applied this to um, our Tai model here, which is the extended Hubbard ladder with nearest labor in, uh, interaction. Uh, that's the extended part. Uh, by Hubbard, usually means just the tunneling plus the uh, local uh, contact interaction. And we actually apply this model to, uh, from Tai model to a, a experimental design. And typically, you know, when you're talking about the physics, there are three steps, right? Toy model, experiment design, and the real experiments. So, uh, so right now, we're talking, now I'm talking about this experiment design. So there are two possible designs we thought over. One is actually the, uh, the dipolar gases, okay? Um, dipolar gases actually can give rise to nearest labor, even beyond the nearest labor interaction. So longer range interaction is very important for, for the study we found. And, uh, and then for the SUN lattice, uh, that's actually uh, a lot of remar remarkable uh, advancement in the cold atoms. Uh, the, uh, the spin uh, for certain atoms like the strontium, for example, in the uh, second column of the periodic table can have a higher nuclear, higher spin uh, for a nuclear spin, right? So those spins are decoupled from the other degree of freedom. So it acts like an artificial dimension, dimension. So that acts like the chain direction. So in this case, the interaction 
is local in the real position space. However, along the M index, that's the spin that access the X, artificial X axis. So the interaction is infinity in this case. It's, it's even beyond the DS labor. So in both cases, we found like the phase diagram with time crystal chaotic. So that's actually, uh, I think for the dipolar gases, I was thinking uh, possibly you can also use the polaroton or axon tone to uh, realize because I'm thinking, uh, let me backtrack a little bit because I'm still learning the uh, axon system. So I was thinking the axon is the particle whole pair from the semiconductor. Uh, so the axon should carry dipole moments. It actually dipole, dipole moments, right? So if you have, if the particles carry dipole moments, you should actually expect uh, dipolar interaction in this problem, right? So then you, you actually would expect axons would be a, a good dipolar gases. Um, and then we already heard from the previous talks, um, in the last two talks, you have a, uh, seen the polar analysis, et cetera, et cetera. So that's actually really, really remarkable. So in the next about uh, 15 minutes, I'm gonna move on. <clears throat> uh, I don't wanna be the person to hold you from the lunch, so. Uh, <clears throat> The next 15 minutes also, I'm gonna, uh, I will report uh, the, the um, progress on the uh, something uh, I, I would call uh, imaginary time crystal. Again, this is uh, motivated by the following question. So what is the thermodynamic analog of time crystal? And here I, I'm gonna uh, introduce a model that will show uh, a such realization of the imaginary time crystal. Uh, uh, as a um, microscopic mechanism, uh, like a symmetry breaking mechanism. And in a macroscopic level, uh, it's absorbable, it will manifest a temperature crystal. So that's actually what I'm going to show uh, in the next few minutes. <clears throat> when you think about the temperature dependence of physical quantity, we are pretty familiar with a few typical situations. Uh, for example, the physical quantity can grow as a function of temperature. Yes, that's like, a, for example, resistivity. And it, we also have many examples uh, to show that the physical quantity can decay, I mean, decrease as a function of T, such as the spin sensibility in the curie wise law, right? Um, then in certain times, the observable can show a peak as a function of T, such as the heat capacity uh, that will indicate a phase transition, uh, for example, in the helium four. Then you may wonder, um, can we go beyond this um, monotonic or single peak uh, situation, going to a new quantum regime? Uh, it, would it be possible to have a O, that's like observable, oscillate periodically in temperature? P or T is not time, it's actually temperature. So this is like a little bit like a naive, crazy academic question. Right? However, this academic question is actually can be um, argued in a heuristic manner uh, in a firm way uh, based on our understanding of quantum many body problem and the classical statistical field theory. Because it's firmly established as follows. For example, in a zero temperature, a um, d-dimensional quantum matter is actually equivalent in many examples to a d plus one dimensional classical uh, uh, matter. Uh, system. The famous example is the 1D ISO model, 1D quantum uh, transverse field ISO model is mapped to a 2D classical ISO model, right? So at a finite temperature, uh, if you think about the partition function that describes a, uh, a, a say, d-dimensional thermal ensemble, and the dual theory is actually a d plus one dimensional Lagrangian in the past integral formalism, in which the time becomes imaginary. The limit of the time axis is the inverse of the temperature, uh, normally known as beta, right? So this actually is the mapping from D dimension of quantum thermal ensemble to a D plus one dimensional Lagrangian uh, formalism in terms of path integral. So those are well known for many decades and, um, and the action has been known uh, in the field theory, especially in the 70s. Um, <clears throat> then if you buy that argument, if you buy the argument between the equivalence between uh, the equivalence between the D plus one dimensional classical matter and the D dimensional quantum matter, right? 
Then suppose I start from the right column here. Uh, assume I'm in the three dimensional space, the real space, position space, X, Y, Z coordinate system, give you that space, right? Assuming I have some kind of like a uh, typical example, like a long range interaction like coolant, such as coolant interaction or dipolar interaction, you could have some like a, like for example, like a weakened crystal or some other charge density wave, whatever. Uh, say that will break the translational symmetry along the Z axis. All right, let's continue symmetry breaking. Then if you map to the D dimensional quantum problem where Z is the imaginary time axis tool, then you would actually uh, imagine the existence of a time crystal order, right? That actually break the time translation symmetry. So this actually realized something we call a time imaginary time crystal, right? So that's actually the argument. So basically that's already the take home message. So it's all by the, uh, the uh, understanding of uh, statistical field theory. Uh, from that actually we understand it's really almost like not impossible. Uh, not to get this imaginary time crystal. If you think the time crystal can exist in the uh, in the quantum problem, right? In the in the uh, low one one dimension low quantum problem. So that is the key. So here, what what we found is actually a very important key important uh, key key ingredient is actually uh, for this to happen is the uh, non local time dependent interaction. And here I'm going to talk about a typical two-body interaction with a retarded interaction. So this is the density density interaction, right? It's a typical two-body interaction with a potential with the interaction potential that actually depends on both space and the time. Here I have suppressed the space coordinate to emphasize the time. So this depends on relative time. And in particular, I'm going to assume this one, this view of tall, contains um, consists of two components. The typical component, this is like a local in time, this is relative time, and this is the independent of the frequency, right? It's just like a time independent term. Plus a, this V prime, this is the dynamic term. This is the retarded interaction term. And this kind of retarded interaction actually can be generated by considering the system, that's our model, coupled to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to the environment, the bus, right? And there are other ideas like the system plus bus idea for the time crystal, including the work by Jonathan Keenan, I think he's in the audience, and the plus many other work. So I'm not talking about that. I want to em actually emphasize the key ingredient for this to happen. Uh, so this potential, um, what we found to work is, must have a local, I mean not local, a potential minimum. That's actually very important. Um, you. And this oscillation is actually a specific form, but this oscillation is not really so important. We have a lot of examples that doesn't have the oscillation. But here, let me just focus on one particular model as shown by this retarded potential, interaction potential here. This actually would produce a decay term and also oscillation term. And in such a form, you always get a, a kind of like a potential minima. This potential minima is very important. That will set the time scale for the imaginary time crystal. That's actually the key, right? <clears throat> and, uh, and in this model, uh, this kind of like a uh, um, um, uh, retarded interaction is induced by the bus particles, such as like photon, phonons, and other problems, right? Other particles. And, uh, and if the particles have this uh, self-energy that has finite lifetime, and for example, there's a damping term here. And the last point I want to emphasize is that um, our problem is like described by the Lagrangian. So it's no longer a Hamiltonian problem. So this is a time dependent problem. Unlike the Floquet time crystal problem, where the time dependence enters, enters the, to the Hamiltonian through the single particle channel, here uh, the time dependence enters the problem through the interaction and through the relative time dependence. So our problem actually has the full uh, continuous time translation invariance. There's no lattice to start with. And in the same time, it's not an equilibrium problem on this regard. We cover to the outside, right, cover the bus. So we don't have the local theory uh, problem. So we're gonna go around the local theory, but in the same time, we do not violate the, uh, the we don't go down the lattice symmetry, right? So we, uh, we start with a system that has the full translation symmetry in time. So this is actually the key. 
and it, and the model, this is the specific model, the particle bosons, and on, this is the one dimensional particle boson model we targeted in particular at half finite, by the way. And, the, and the keep this in mind, this alpha is the strength of this retarded interaction, which is the key ingredient for all the things to happen. And my colleague, actually my um, collaborator in Shanghai, his expert uh, is a young outstanding fellow uh, uh, good at the quantum Monte Carlo, actually, um, he actually did this uh, calculation. We actually found out the following. The density correlation function <clears throat> um, actually shows remarkable time crystal uh, phase. Let me just talk about the one by one. First, focus on the time, the temporal part, all right? So the, as you can see, this temporal part is a function of the, uh, the time dependence. Uh, depends on the strengths for the stronger interaction versus the weak interaction. The black lines are weak interaction. So the black lines that are just here, there's low order, no oscillation. I mean, basically it's a very small magnitude. For the, for the stronger interaction, you will get actually something like this. So it's strong oscillation here. That indicates the true long range order. This is goes like system time, all right? Very long time. And then we can extract, extract that the order permit, order permit in the imaginary time with this certain frequency uh, by defining this uh, M sub tor in this integral. All right, this is kind of like a ITC or the parameter. Again, for the strong interaction, it's different from the weak interaction. This is the plot as the inverse of the system size. So this is the thermodynamic limit. So as you can see, the order parameter appears at a finite, uh, it's finite, even in the thermodynamic limit. And the simultaneously, they also have charge density wave order shown from the spatial part of the correlation function. And what we found is actually space-time locked crystal. All right, so this is the phase diagram. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when the retarded inter interaction strength is strong enough, actually the system is in the imaginary time crystal below which is the large liquid. It's not the time, time crystal, all right? So what is the time crystal in the real space? Uh, in the picture. So the time crystal is a space locked order. And the symmetry breaking is along the 45, you can just think about the 45 degree direction in the X and the tall coordinate system. Um, you may wonder uh, why in the one dimension you can have a true long range symmetry, I mean true long range order that breaks the continuous symmetry. Yes, that's actually really, because you, you have a so-called this common work Common uh, memory working theory that actually prevents a uh, true long range uh, order associated with the continuous symmetry breaking, right? So uh, I just want to point out that there's a difference here. Uh, it is true that we have a continuous symmetry along the two axes, and however, we have a lattice along the x dimension on this, this di in, in this dire direction. And our order is actually space time locked. So the ordering breaks the symmetry along, say, along this direction, along the joint direction. So the symmetry is broken is the joint the symmetry between a continuous and a, a, a district lattice translation symmetry. So the joint symmetry is total symmetry. It's actually a district symmetry. So what is broken, uh, what the symmetry is broken by this ITC order is actually a district symmetry. So for that very reason, you don't have something like a Goldstone mode associated with that would be dangerous to kill the long range order, right? And for this very reason, we can understand why, uh, actually we calculated the Brin's function for the single particle. The system is quasi uh, super free in the 1D sense. However, because this feature I showed here, there's a kind of a charge gap. So it's incompressible. So this is a quite remarkable. We don't fully understand the physics yet, um, because we understand that both Harvard model has two well-known phases uh, for the case without disorder, namely the model insulator and the superfree. Here, our study seems to show there's a third phase, which is superfree, but not compressible. So it's not, it's neither model insulator nor superfree. So it's something we still try to understand. <clears throat> so what about the observable in a macroscopic uh, space? Because nobody can really access the imaginary time access. Uh, that's just like a machinery in the statistical field theory, right? Nobody can really measure that the uh, imaginary time in the time interval. 
what we can know is actually the, the limit of the time axis. You know, you measure the time axis, right? That's actually the uh, inverse of the temperature beta. So that's actually the length of the axis, the time axis. So if you plot the spatial order parameter, that's check the density. All right, um, thanks so much, Jonathan. Yeah. I think, yeah, so if you just give the conclusion slide, I think, and then we'll go on yeah. to questions. I'm gonna just show the uh, minus two slide. So I just want to advertise this work I mentioned in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> the, it's also on the Harvard model. It's actually about the anomalous flow quake corner excitations. If anyone is interested in, uh, I would be happy to talk about that. Um, uh, this might be uh, uh, simulatable by code atoms or polaritons or some other photonic related systems. Uh, it's a kind of fascinating topic because this is a hot topic in the community. So I will just uh, summarize the main thing I talked about today, uh, that is the time crystal. Uh, so the first one is the uh, uh, example to show the many body localization is a concept. It's not really necessary to stabilize a so-called pre-thermal time crystal phase. Um, so that was a kind of like a surprise. Usually people think, you know, uh, this is a, <clears throat> a, a pre-thermal phase, you need a mechanism to stabilize it. So there's a, a lot of reasons. So, so if you're interested in, if anyone's interested in the uh, reason, uh, we have some uh, understanding why this is a, a stable without the many body localization. The second one I was talking about is actually uh, by proposing a model with retarded two body interaction, you actually can uh, show the possibility of imaginary time crystal as a quantum analog in the thermal open quantum systems, right? Uh, so the imaginary time crystal is actually a microscopic mechanism that seems to break in. Uh, it manifests itself as a temperature property. In a sense, you can measure uh, the temperature oscillation of a certain quantity like density correlation function or something like that. Yeah, thanks. And really apologize for the unexpected internet uh, issue. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but actually sometimes it's happening in the time, in the right time. Okay. <laughs> I see Kiyoma is smiling, <laughs> Monica, ready. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. So um, as with previous sessions, you can either let me know that you, um, want to ask a question through the chat, you should be able to send a message to me. Jimmy, I think I can also see if people raise their hand. Um, so if anyone wants to use either of those mechanisms, um, please, please do so. While, I, while I'm waiting for questions from other people in the audience, perhaps let me ask one. Um, so if I think about why, why I thought that MBL was probably necessary in flow K systems, my understanding was that if you didn't have disorder, you would have heating. Um, the, the disorder was important to kill the heating. Is yeah. there a simple answer why, why your system gets around that? Yes, so um, it's just kind of like a special regime. Um, if you think about this a Floquet Quay problem, uh, there's a flow Quay Hamiltonian. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that. So somehow if you are studying, um, you, if, so this model uh, uh, allows a, a initial state that's a, like a double period time crystal phase you start from such initial state, and that that initial state is also very special in a way. Uh, it, it has a huge component as the eigenstate of the HF, the Floquet Hamiltonian. So it's more like a, a integrable problem. This is like a one plus one dimensional problem. It's a one D problem, and uh, so somehow this time crystal state happens to be kind of like an eigenstate, periodically. Uh, so this, this model, so that's like a static version of the dynamic problem. So the, the initial state has always go back to the, you know, the eigenstate, stay on eigenstate of the Floquet Hamiltonian. So for that very reason, uh, so this just stayed there for a long time without heating problem. So that means it's like the eigenstate of the, it's a many body eigenstate, it's just remarkable. Okay. So, so that means if you have a, if you, if you have an initial state that is, happens to be a time crystal phase, and it also happens to be a state that has a huge decomposition component on the eigenstate of the Floquet Hamiltonian, including the interaction. Suppose you solve that problem exactly, 
And th then you don't need many body localization to stabilize it. it basically, it's just like the flow create many body eigenstates to stay. So it's more like a protected by, it's a many body state protected by the interacting flow query Hamiltonian. So that's actually a numerical statement. So we don't have an exact solution. It's more like we checked. I, I don't have the slide uh, here, but uh, we checked uh, the solution of the, how the flow query Hamiltonian for that model at the different interactions, et cetera. So that seems to be the very viable possibility. Yeah. Does that okay. answer your question? Yeah. Yep. Um, thank you. Um, so I see there's a question from Peter Littlewood, so I'll just ask to unmute. Yeah, uh, no, thank, thank you, uh, Vincent. That was a nice talk. I sort of want to ask the inverse question, really, about the last one, which is, you know, why doesn't the temperature crystal thermalize? What prevents yeah, so, you from doing that? Because you've, I mean, right. you're coupling it effectively to a bath. Right. So bath this is a, is a fascinating question. Uh, so um, let me give you a short answer because I don't want to kill more time. Uh, I, I will be happy to talk with Peter privately. So the short answer is like that. Uh, I'm going to think about a uh, Lagrangian problem, not the Hamiltonian problem. So I'm going to think about the whole problem as an imaginary time formalism. So I'm not looking for the solution to the Hamiltonian problem. I'm looking for the solution to the Euler Lagrangian equation. So I will get a time dependent solution. And this is the saddle point in the Pathological formalism. So there's no way, so the decay problem and all those problems does not even exist. I'm actually already in my in the face, in the word line space, uh, I'm already on this, like in this action principle, if I'm in the Euclidean space. So I'm already in this maximum possible, like a mean field point in the space time version. So it's more like a one dimensional higher, instead of thinking about the like, Hamiltonian, you actually think about a solution to the Lagrangian equation. So it's a solution to that a Lagrangian equation. So that means the saddle point is a stable. So there's no way to go lower in the space time. So the only difference is that your, your solution is not just dependent on time in the, this time factor e to the IET. Instead, it has a kind of like a convoluted together. So the, the, the solution to the Lagrangian equation is not a separable in the time piece and the spatial piece. Instead, it's a joint together piece. So, so for that, and it's a saddle point already is a stationary point. So for that reason, and the question of decaying, basically there's no lower state for that solution. Okay. So that's yeah. actually, so we don't have all those issues. Uh, uh, so that's actually a very different domain, but it definitely is a really good, important question because it's a question we have to really think why, right? So this is the answer. So far we have uh, come up and um, that's actually, I hope that answers your question. Maybe you're happy. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, th thank you. Um, so thank you, Vincent. I think we should stop there. So um, I should now ask Vincent to stop sharing the screen. Sure. And to